Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Last week, what we did is we talked about this right here, conductor fill inside of a box. Now, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase some of the stuff, but I want you guys to see this. So if this rings a bell and you're like, oh, that's right, I remember last week. Well, this is, we're building on this. So I wanna talk about uh, conductor fill in a box. Do you count the wire nuts? Do you count the pigtails that you make on them? So we're gonna jump right into this we're gonna start right here with this. We're gonna use this example and we're going to build on it. Now, I'm gonna try my damnedest not to make any kinds of stories, but if I just keep rambling on, then I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, come a little closer. I'm gonna bring you to the board. And oh, by the way, thumbs up guys if you like my new board. I mean, remember I had that little small one? Well, I've graduated. This is the biggest I can find, you know. I guess all the other long boards are probably sitting off the coast of California waiting to get into port. Anyway, so. This is my size of my board right now, and I think it's pretty good. It fits me perfect. So anyway, come closer, and we'll talk about this in some greater detail, and we'll just keep on rolling with it. So, Okay, as you guys see, I'm not an artist. Same from last week, so let's build on this. So I'm going to erase some of this stuff right now. All right, all right. now we're going to recalculate this real quick, put it on the board so we can see what I'm talking about exactly because that's important. All right, so we have 212, two wires. Now, if you don't know how to figure out the cubic inches, guys, I'm going to do it really quick. I'm not going to really sit here and say, okay, this is this, this, because I want you guys, if you don't know this, go back to the other video. It'll be right up here in the corner. You guys can check it out, see exactly what I'm talking about and this will all make sense. So we have two hots, two neutrals, and one ground for a total of five wires. All right, we have an internal and a receptacle for a total of seven, eight wires. And we have 12.2, it's at 2.25, and that equals eight, times 2.25 equals 18 cubic inches. All right, here's where we're gonna start. So we know that our box fill with the wires we have in it and the yoke receptacle, we have at 18 cubic inches. Now, we know that our box in question is 20.3 cubic inches. So we are completely in line with this. That looks like Coonan. Let me, let me fix that. Cubic inches, there we go. All right, so with the receptacle, what you can do with these two 12 twos, you can actually put one hot here, one hot here, because there's two hots, and one neutral there and one neutral there, because there's two neutrals, and then one ground there. You have to make a pigtail on that ground, obviously. And you can do that way. Now, I don't like doing that. Simple fact that if this receptacle goes bad, you know, it's gonna take out the rest of your circuits. Now, is that a big deal in the house? No, is it quick and easy? Yes, does it look like crap? I think so personally, but it's up to you. You're the, be the one wiring your house or whatever you're wiring. So make your own assumption on that and we'll go from there. Now, I'm gonna say that for the way I do it, I always make pigtails. Now, if you guys know what pigtails are, it's basically you're taking two wires like this, you put them together, now you wouldn't put them black and white together, and you put another wire off that, so you'd have three wires coming off here. So you just put, you know, if these are two blacks, so you'd put them together and then have one wire come off. That's pigtail. So the question is, do you count in this box with your cubic inches, do you count the wire nuts and do you count your extra pigtail? Now, you can go to 314, 16B5. Just go to 314 and just start reading there. It's a lot of good information there. And if you have a handbook like I do, there's a table that basically breaks it down for you guys, exactly what I'm talking about. It tells you, you know, what you count, what you do not count. So it tells you straight up in there, if the wire is coming into the box, so if you have a box and the wire is coming in to your clamps and leaving your clamps or whatever, anything that originates in this box, so it's coming into the box and staying in this box, you count. If you have the wire sticking out and you make a pigtail on it, those wires are not counted, nor do you count the wire nut. So you do not count the pigtail. You do not count the wire nut. Now, do I agree with that? That's a hard one to judge because sometimes, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little story because you need to understand what I'm talking about. If you have these wires in here, okay, and you go to make a join up, and let's say these are 12 gauge wires. Let's just hypothetically say you take a blue wire nut. I ain't talking about the little blue 
uh, baby blue ones. I'm talking about the big fat blue ones and that's all the wiring that you have. And you stick that in there, you're gonna take up so much space. I have seen many times, again and again and again, people using bigger wire nuts than what they need and it crowds the box. Now, code doesn't say, you know, if you put a blue wire in there, sorry about your luck, you can't put it in there. You can't put your receptacle in there. But, just use common sense, guys. There's a video I've done. You guys can check up in the corner. It'll be coming up here directly about this kind of thing right here. What wire nets do you need for what situation? All right, that's important as heck, guys. Don't use a bigger wire net or a smaller wire net than you need because, I mean, think about this, you know. If you were making this box up, would you want to cram the receptacle in there? Now, if you do it like the code says here, we have plenty of room, correct? But still, why not just take your time, think about what you need to do. That way you guys will not be cramming nothing in there, you know, blah, blah, blah. All right? So, the answer to the question is, do you have to count pigtails and wire nuts? No, you do not. So, you guys can make your pigtails and put your wire nuts in there, and you're still in this bubble right here. The next video I'm gonna do is gonna be kind of building a little bit on this, is a change in the code about ground wires. Because you remember what I said that on these wires here, you know, you're counting all those wires, all the ground wires, let's specify ground wires right now, as one wire. So if I had a, if I had four Romexes in here, there'd be four grounds in there, but I would only count it as one. You remember I said that last time, on my first video so there's a change and we need to talk about that so tune in next time uh i'm gonna have this back up here so when this board pops up you guys will be like oh i remember that and then you'll we'll build on that because the next thing is important you've got to keep up with your code changes guys uh i can't stress enough how important it is for you guys to understand and think about things that you're doing because it could come back to bite you in the long run, guys. I mean, I'm just letting you know. Uh, I've got some exciting things coming up on my channel. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Uh, we're going to be mounting a sub panel up here and we're going to be wiring it up to show you guys uh, how to basically wire it. And we're also going to be doing uh, branch circuits out of this panel and just a lot of different things. So definitely tune in. Next week will be how to figure out the fifth wire in the ground, the code change. So definitely tune in. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and my board. Like and subscribe. God bless, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.